Hello, dog people who love music. You have found your niche right here in the Rocker Dog Podcast, the show that talks to musical artists about their awesome dogs. I'm your host, Tim Dill, along with my awesome dog, Charlie. And today we welcome to the show comedian, actress, activist, and singer, Margaret Cho, who's in the midst of her Live and Livid tour that runs through mid-December. And this is Sir Jeff Tweedy-loving Rocker Dog. This is at Lucia Caterina Lawler Cho. She also has a Korean name, which is uh, Cho Rucha. And she is my uh, four years and 10 month old Chihuahua Dalmatian mix. She's a rescue and she comes from the Michelson's Found Animal Group. They're a wonderful rescue organization. And when we met, it was really love at first sight. And she really is, she can hear me talking about her. She is the best (laughs) girl. She goes with me everywhere. She has her own seat in my car. Uh, She has her own seat whenever I get on a plane. She's got a little pouch that sits on my stomach. And I have a lot of animals, but she's really the boss of everyone. I, I think I get that from every Chihuahua I talk uh-huh. to. The, the guests, and, and many times there's a Chihuahua with much bigger dogs and much more intimidating dogs. And they always say it's the Chihuahua that rules the roost. Yes, yeah, she runs everything, which is incredible. Uh, like actually the other day I was sick, I had food poisoning. And so she was making sure that nobody disturbed me. So the cats would try to get close to see what was going on and she would make sure they got out of the way (laughs) or they would try to get on the bed to see what mommy was doing. Like she usually allows the cats to be on the bed, but in this situation, because I wasn't feeling well, she wanted, you know, everybody to know that mommy needed her rest, but she doesn't realize is that her barking wakes me up. Right. (laughs) But, But she's, um, so diligent and taking care of her mother. Well, good girl. It's funny that just in your introduction alone raises a number of questions. One being, where's the Dalmatian in her? Let's see. Well, Does she have any spots? I don't. She doesn't have the size, that's for sure. Doesn't have the size. She doesn't really have any spots. She's much longer than the average Chihuahua. Wow. That, which you could, I think there is also a little bit of Dachshund and a little bit of... Um, a little bit of Italian greyhound in there. Okay. Um, so I don't really see it. To me, she looks quite pure Chihuahua. But um, I guess with the length of her body, maybe she's only about five pounds. Okay, that's she looks a, that's small. She's small. And she even, looks a little bit bigger in the camera. Yeah, I was going to say even seeing her in context to you, she seems maybe nine or ten pounds. No, she's um, she keeps it at a trim five sometimes a <laughs> five yeah five and a quarter something like that she's very active so she does have like a a little bit of a heavier musculature so that it seems like there's jack russell in there but really there isn't but she's a very delicate beautiful beautiful girl yes indeed and the name you have uh three names with your last name so where do the names derive from Lucia is just, I think, a really pretty name. I think it's um, like the island Santa Lucia, the island nation Santa Lucia. It's also uh, like a Castilian Spanish name. It's like a very, to me, there's something very uplifting about it. It means light. So she's like light. And Catherine is Catherine Deneuve. I love Catherine Deneuve. I love her movies. I love her elegance. So uh, Lucia Caterina means clear light. Uh, Catherine is like clear. A Lawler is my um, best friend who passed away uh, just before I um, adopted Lucia. So that's okay. my way of remembering her. And um, so that's her 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 name, Lucia L L K L. Um, <laughs> and then Cho Rucha Rucha like Lucia like you know we all have a Korean name. Mine is Cho Moran. So the last name is first. So uh, Cho Rucha. That's what if we went to Korea, that's what they would um, Korean Koreanify 
make make Korean her name is as a lucha rucha because we don't have an L. Okay, and then four years and ten months ago, that's when she was born. But around that time, when you got her, what was going on in your life, and what was the impetus for for getting her? I uh, was uh, really uh, moving into the house that I live in now. Actually, I've lived in this house since twenty twenty. It's two thousand. I can't say 20, right. 20, zero. <laughs> so I've lived here since that, but then I moved out for um, it to be remodeled for three years. So okay. as the house was being reconstructed, I moved out and I came back the month that I came back, I realized I wanted to be here, you know, because all of my, I had gotten divorced and my other rescue Chihuahua had died and uh, I didn't have, I was dogless as I've always had dogs, but after my divorce and after my other dog died, it was not, there was no dogs. And so I realized there was something missing. And since I was going to come be back in this house alone, I thought what a nice thing to adopt Lucia. And I had a friend who worked at an animal shelter who had a keen eye. And she said, well, this litter just came in. They're about five weeks old, but uh, they'll be ready to look at in about a couple of weeks, but let me give you some video. And I just fell in love and I knew this was, this was it. And she had a twin sister. Her sister uh, has black nose and black eyes. Okay. And I was given the choice between the two of them. And so I, I sat and I held, held them both. And then she, when I, when she got to my arms, she just fell asleep in the crook of my elbow. She put a snout in there right. and fell asleep. And I was like, this is, this is it. I'm, you can't, don't, nobody move. I, I'm like, <laughs> nobody gets hurt. Let's, let me take the dog. It's going to be, I'll be all right. Everything, everything will be fine. So I took her, I never let go. She's been asleep in the crook of my arm ever since, you know, and she's just such a great person, a great person, uh, a person, a baby uh, dog to have as a companion where I tra travel on the road, touring around, um, going everywhere. She's just right there with me. She helps me a lot to kind of settle in to where I'm going to be and, you know, manages my own sort of like need to have company on the road. It's very exhausting and also very lonely. Right. So it's actually great to have her along the ride. Well, I hear many times of this notion of emotional support dog, and I, I assume we can attach that to Lucia as, as someone to take, take care of and look after when sometimes you don't want it all to be about you. Yes, it's very important. As, as some, I, you know, I really have anxiety and I also have just depression and all sorts of things. And, you know, she is a great help. And she's had some training in that capacity as well. So she does a little bit more than just a, a companion dog would. So that's, that's a really great thing. But she's really special. And I just lucked out. You know, she's very uh, easygoing and yeah, I, I take her to every comedy club, sometimes at a rock venue. It's a little if it's loud, like mm -hmm. anything louder than a Jeff Tweedy, um, she can't go. Right. So anything, you know, if you're if like the more acoustic it is, the better off we are. Like if we're going to like the hotel cafe here, that's great. If we're going to Largo, that's great. But anything that is a little bit, the decibel gets a little bit higher, she can't go. So that's kind of my rule for her. Um, just for her her ears but you know I use I don't really go to very uh, loud shows I'm not going in for that very heavy bass right. so we're usually okay we like a good acoustic kind of level uh, not not too crazy not too loud it, it's really perfect okay I'm curious just to talk briefly about the training you mentioned especially when it came to mental health because recently I spoke to somebody just the other day and they were mentioning how their dog helped with their medication mm -hmm. in a sense that the dog, I guess, would always bark at whatever, eight o'clock in the morning and two in the afternoon and seven o'clock at night, because that was when they needed to take the medication. So that that to me was a revelation, like, oh, my gosh, I never heard of such a thing. But in the context that you were explaining, you know, she was uh, trained in certain ways for, you know, I guess, mental health in what ways? Well, she knows I'm having like a panic. She'll like, like less rest her body on my chest and you know, do, do certain like comforting actions, whether that's sort of nosing me to kind of get out of these repetitive things. And it's a very mm -hmm. um, intuitive. It's almost like we just know about each other and she's right. really protective of me as well. So 
It's something that like she can use her instinctual behavior to kind of see when something's off. And that that's an incredible thing. Um, but I know that they're all sort of trained to do special things. They can alert to different situations, um, but they're very helpful to stay up, stave off like panic attacks. And, you know, she's really, really great with that. That's amazing. Amazing and great to hear. Does she ever cause you stress as any child would or any, you know, I, you know, I have a dog as, as well. Well, she has a luxating patella, which is stressful, you know, and that's something that's a very common in small dogs, which it's unfortunate too, because she's so young that it's already at kind of a a stage where it's it's and it's something that you can't really benefit surgery wise like it doesn't really have a benefit it's kind of something that you just have to sort of stay on top of and you know it's just one of those things it's something that happens with the breed um that's kind of stressful only just because i, I want her to be comfortable and and yeah. you know be able to uh run around she loves to run around she's a big fan of the zoomies excellent so it's a very um you know, I, I wanted to maintain her active lifestyle, but uh, that that concerns me that, you know, because she is so small. I think, though, that, you know, we, we do manage her uh, activity pretty well. She does do a little bit of CBD, mm -hmm. which um, is a drug free household, but I will allow that. That's right. actually fine for her. And so, you know, I think she's OK. Is that in what sense is that for for joint health or to calmer or in what? Because I know a, there's different strains and different products that do different things. It's like a it's like an infused salmon oil that controls the inflammation in okay. her joints, and so presumably it would be something to help stave off the um, the uh, luxating patella getting any worse. Okay, I meant to say this in the setup that I ha I have a dog who will bark when he sees something outside. So oh Try yeah, it. come here. Come here. We're on. This is your show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. She will really, she doesn't really, she's not a huge barker, but she really will bark at squirrels, but not birds. Okay. <laughs> and not voles or um, chipmunks don't even set her up. It's just squirrels or rats. I've seen rats outside. She won't say anything. Oh or God. lizards, she doesn't ever say anything or doesn't ever make a murmur. But squirrels in particular, she's a huge problem with. She will really bark when she sees squirrels. That's funny. Now, have you had any drama with her out on tour when you, t or, well, I, you take her everywhere. So whether it be a plane or a venue or have you lost her? No, no, no. Uh, gosh, I don't know what I would do. That would be really alarming. One time um, I was on a film set. I was playing a character and I, the character wrote a segue and she was not pleased about that because <laughs> um, I fell off it and I was not badly injured, but it was like the before, when I was writing it and in the scene, she could tell that I was nervous. And then she started to really get anxious. Like, and I wasn't holding her. She was actually far off set, right, but she right. could see me. And she was worried. And then when I fell, she was really crying because that was like she couldn't do anything about like she could, she could feel my rising anxiety before right. I actually fell. And so what was good is uh, we had to change. We got to change the script. And so I my character didn't have to write the same way anymore, which is really great because um, <laughs> it was scary. But she uh, she was very upset about that. But other than that, I think she's so small that there's never really been an issue. You know, I have uh, a lot of the paperwork for her and she's probably certified as a service dog. And so I, right. I'm able to take her into arenas that are, you know, not really welcoming to animals. And, and she's so physically small that it wouldn't, so nobody really notices anyway, because she sort of stays in her little bag, but uh, have I haven't really had an issue. Okay. Do you have someone on your team that stays with her? Like when you're on stage, is she locked? No in a you know locked in a backstage room or no she uh well she's usually in my dressing room and she'll just stay she doesn't really need to be locked in she'll just stay there she knows my comedy and she knows like when i'm wrapping up then she'll stop uh, you know get up wake up and kind of like uh get really ready for for something else sometimes she'll sit on the side of the stage with the person who opens for me daniel webb who she loves 
Oh, that's great. So much. She loves him so much. Usually she'll be sitting with him just off the side of the stage. If not, she'll be in the dressing room and she's really um, happy in there by herself. Okay. Now I have a note that says fun stuff. To me, it sounds like fun stuff. This predates her and it begs the question also, are you a Chihuahua girl? I mean, is that, do you have Chihuahuas down the line in your history? Okay. Yes. I've had two Chihuahuas uh, before Lucia. I had a Dogmar who is still alive and she's uh, was a mini pincher chihuahua and she's with my my ex-husband and uh, she's very happy. And then I had Gudrun, who was the original white chihuahua. And she um, is my beautiful, beautiful girl who was the ruler of this house and really was the queen of everything and she um she was really the the chihuahua of all chihuahuas I mean, she was just very different she was quite large she was about 15 pounds about three times the size of lucia um she actually was about the size of my cats my cats are about that size <laughs> and uh so she but she was incredible her spirit is here her ashes are here but she is lo- lo- long left this mortal coil right well I'm, I know this is late. I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you fulfilled your life in such a enriching way. So but the fun stuff to me was this 2001. So it, I'm not sure which dog falls in that realm or if they're involved, but you did a PETA concert for party animals. And I believe with Sir Paul McCartney was yes. either headlining. So tell me about that. Was, was that a fun experience? It was so fun. It was uh, an incredible night. I uh, was there, it was there, uh, it was was definitely such an amazing thing to meet Sir Paul McCartney. I, of course, I just love him. And, you know, I just was so, we were so excited and so honored to see him. And I've gotten to see him a few times in concert, which is really extraordinary. I I just really, I love him and I, I love I love the Beatles. I I mean, he's just the best. And um, also got to see and hang out with the B-52s, who I got to see uh, and tour with many years later. What awesome. a great, what a great, great band. I, I I mean, just legendary and so fun and so cool and just like you think they're going to be. You right. you think you hear their music and that's who they are. And that's great. I really love that band. I really adore them. I'm looking forward to going to go see them in um, Las Vegas with their residency. Just about the coolest residency you could go see. I mean, that that just it, it's so amazing to um, go uh, and and be on tour with them. They really party. I mean, you you <laughs> you know, like I've I've been like in quite a few partying backstage areas, whether um, it was a Cypress Hill or. You know, <laughs> nobody right. parties like the B fifty two. You, I mean, you. I, I cannot believe what they get down to. They are really naughty, and they are such beautiful people. So that's that, that's the band to party with. If you're going to party with anyone, do it with the B fifty twos. That's funny to hear. It reminds me of there's there's a meme going around that I saw this week. I don't know how old it is, but it's saying that Mitch McConnell is eighty something and Mick Jagger is eighty something. And you look at the two and which one's, you know, more physically able and mentally acute. So maybe sex, drug, you know, and rock and roll is the secret we've all been uh, it avoiding. It really is. It really is. I mean, and Mick Jagger seems so hip and fit. And he's actually on TikTok as well, yeah. uh, making t- TikToks, kind of making fun of his own persona. So right. I... I don't know about I, I don't know why Mitch McConnell doesn't have that verve, that that <laughs> spunk. It's got something to do with maybe being so serious all these years. Yes, quite possibly. Uh, before I forget, how did you first get involved with PETA? They, I think that was like in the well, in the 90s, they were very famously doing a lot of um, ads where you would do like um, different kinds of like things where I'd rather go naked than wear fur. and. Right. So you had that sort of campaign going and um, there was all it was actually very almost mainstream. Now, I think they've gotten to this very um, kind of edgy place. Mm-hmm. They're they're not as mainstream as they used to be because they're a lot more aggressive in their tactics and in, in, in you know promoting their message, which I, I, I think is really interesting. You know, they they've gone 
into a different phase where they used to be actually very mainstream, right. in my opinion, which I think that they're they're really important. I think they're a really important organization, but it's it's interesting how much the world has sort of like either ignored animals or now sort of looked at looked at uh, at, at them in a different way as that there's more ways to like save animals or there are more ways to help animals than just PETA because PETA used to be the only organization. Yeah. Yeah. Besides, b- besides the old standbys of like the uh, Humane Society and right. SPCA. Or, yeah. Or green but again, those were, yeah, 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 those were very mainstream, but I, I, I feel like PETA was like the originators of the viral video before there was right. such thing as a viral video because they did like stunts yeah. that got a lot of press coverage. Yeah. And, and action, actions, I think what happened was a lot of the stuff that they started to do like on red carpets was like people were upset about, but I think it's funny. Like, I think it's yeah. funny to put flour on people wearing fur. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's just kind of like, it, it, it it's a it's an interesting way to look at activism. I mean, I, I always think it is very rock and roll, though, when they're like applying for jobs at Donna Karen and going all the way up through the uh, vetting process to get into Donna Karen's office and then showing her pictures and video of foxes being yeah. slaughtered at her factory, which is like that is so rock and roll. And what a long game. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's very I, I really am I'm very impressed by all of the things they've done, but it is a very, um, very controversial organization. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's turn our attention to your music career, which I was uh, I'm late to the party, I admit, but I was happily surprised to listen to this stuff. And even even reading the reviews, your voice was compared to Chrissy Hind. Oh, and Debbie that's Harry. Nice. That's nice. And I, I heard, if you go to American Myth, I hear Shirley Manson myself. Oh, that's great. Well, I love them all. Yeah. They're all my heroes. Um, I'm such a also 90s baby. Like, so my favorite singers are uh, Natalie Merchant and, and Tracy Thorne. Mm-hmm. I, I, I I really am do, trying to do my very best. And of course, Fiona Apple is the ultimate. You know, I am a real uh, musical side character. What, you know, I'm really like, I, I've just sort of walked in the background in a lot of like musicians' lives and then fortunately been able to get them to be on my record or get them to do something for me. And, you know, I, I, I love to write songs and I, I just love to play them. I love to play music. And so for me, it's a, it's an outsized hobby, maybe a little less though than Steve Martin. Steve Martin's a full like virtu- virtuoso, right. but I I really am just a a have like I have a good time playing. But I have good fortune enough to be able to be produced by John Bryan, and 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 every once in a while really get something good to to sound good. But it's a lot of fun for me. Now I'm curious, does this go back to Largo at all? Like I used to see John Bryan play Largo and I know Fiona Apple used to play Largo and 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 you've got a murderer's row of collaborators and musicians. Yes. Yes. It's all Largo. Well, it's all Largo, you know, it's all from hanging out there, from going to see John there on late nights and, you know, uh, when uh, every sort of thing, like everybody would be in town to come and play, they would come and after their show ended and they would come and play at Largo and you would just to, get to see incredible performances like once in a lifetime things happen there um so yes uh, my musical journey kind of begins and ends at largo and it always is about that and anytime i play now which isn't that often i i play there okay and as a dog mom do you speak to other artists ever about their dogs and i raise this because i want to name drop a couple of guests i've had on the show and i know they didn't have the dogs back then, but I had Tegan Quinn of Tegan and Sarah, who mm-hmm. did intervention with you. Um, mm-hmm. She she talked about George on her show. And then just very recently, I think two episodes preceding this will be Garrison Starr. Oh, Garrison. Well, you mean you with Gracie? I haven't met Gracie yet, but uh, I've heard so much about Gracie and I love Garrison. Garrison is my favorite just favorite singer songwriter person also great to work with she's an incredible producer and Mm -hmm. we've written a lot together we've played a lot together she's just somebody that i really idolize i love her musical just her her um sound like the way that she sings the way that she sounds the way that she puts words together the way that she puts chords together 
you know, it's it's really something special. And I just I admire her so much, you know, and um, like I get a lot of the same feelings about her that I do about Tom Petty, who I also really admire and mm -hmm. think she's like as close to, to like a female Tom Petty as you know, that that's like the, the aesthetic and that sound. I mean, she yeah. is just she's so special. But I haven't met Gracie because I heard Gracie's scared of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, she and Gracie is nine and a half so she probably overlapped during american myth but i guess even the uh the question I, I know i brought up some people but do you tend to ever talk to fellow musicians fellow comedians about their dogs when you know they're they have a dog or do they speak to you about the dog because yes. the dog's always present yes well lucia since lucia is physically always there lucia has a real love affair with all of the these different people I mean, she loves everybody and she loves to say hi to everyone um lucia is in love with jeff tweedy and <laughs> jeff tweedy has tried to steal her a number of times so you know you may eventually see lucia on the back of a wilco tour bus i wouldn't put it past her she really loves jeff tweedy she loves americana that's great. We love we love yeah. Jeff Tweedy. Yes. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Everybody loves Jeff Tweedy. So picking one of your songs that seem to be dog centric, you've got a song, Hey Big Dog. And this yes. was the collaboration with Fiona Apple that you wrote with Nancy Griffin. What was oh, the inspiration? Oh, it's, it's Patty Griffin. Oh, I'm sorry. What would I say? I said Nancy, Nancy Griffin. Who? Who's Sorry? Nancy Griffin? Oh, Who's Nancy's another? Okay. She's another wonderful singer songwriter from the 90s. Right. Uh, Patty Griffin is from Austin. She's um beautiful uh but yes that song was for my big dog wraith who is a shepherd mix who uh was my heart dog and he was a very large boy he's very scared of wind blowing and the fireworks was really that was actually a really you know i the i since then i've never had i haven't had an animal that was a uh, worried about fireworks but Rafe was so terrified of fireworks and the wind. And um, he uh, would really get scared and salivate all over everything. But he had really bad hip dysplasia, uh. which bothered him. You know, those very big shepherds, and, yep, yep. you know, it's, it's so sad. But he was the best boy. And um, yeah, I have his ashes up and a lot of paintings of him all around. And um, I have a tattoo of him. I really, I mean, I just, uh, you know, that's the guy that is like, he, uh, he was the best dog and, you know, he didn't really go around that much, you know, he, I was traveling a lot. And, and so he would, you know, be at home with a sitter or, you know, you know, when I moved to New York for a while, he came with me. That was like the one time mm -hmm. that he did go on a plane, but he just didn't really, he wasn't really that kind of a guy, but he was, uh, really the best dog. And you played him in the video. Yes, I play I, I play him in the video and uh, Fiona Apple sings him It's her. Her voice is his voice. Yes. And it's a duet between a person and their dog. Yeah, that was great. I loved it. And uh, side note, the cover art was done by Sean Barber. Yes. Who I believe yes. is an artist who works from still life. Did you pose for him? For that I post for, I post for him uh, well I uh I post for him I've been tattooed by him and I did I did pose for him when I was there um it was in uh their tattoo studio in San Francisco when he was there um and I was being tattooed by another person at the shop but I've also been tattooed by Sean um and Sean is a very close friend and uh they've all moved to LA but Sean Sean is amazing I wrote the foreword for his book and um He's a he's an incredible artist, incredible painter, but also incredible tattooer and just a great guy. And I think they have dogs now, too. They didn't have dogs before. I'd be interested to learn. My jaw dropped when I saw his name. He's from my hometown. Oh, wow. He's from a tiny hometown in central New York, Cortland, New York, mm. of 24,000 people. And oh. when I saw that. I was like, oh, my gosh. And I went to the yeah. site. And I'm like, that's him. That's him. So that's wild. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, he is uh, the best guy. And um, yeah, he uh, I, I I really love him. And I think they were considering dogs for a long time. But I think Kim wanted a small dog and Sean wanted a big dog. But I, I'm not sure which way they went. Maybe the French bulldog route. I don't know. Something like that. Okay. Well, I'll ask because I want to reach out to him now that I saw his name. And it's, you know, we didn't I can't say I know him well, but he was a, a couple of years uh, behind me and us artists kind of knew each other in high school. So I'll, I'll have to say hello.
So I wind up every show with what I call the zoomies, oddly enough, and that just means five quick questions. The first question I know the answer to, I've seen it on video, but I'm going to ask it, and is, do you kiss your dog on the mouth? Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm all over the snout. She doesn't like it. She doesn't like and it. I, and I saw on video that Jerry O'Connell also kisses your dog on the mouth. She's in love with Jerry O'Connell. She <laughs> she's really in love with him. Like she she pushed him down on the ground. She was she loves him so much. She <laughs> loves men. She's just crazy about men. It's well, so I funny. See, I can see why she'd be so popular. She's so good looking. She's so good looking and she's just so small, you know, but she's just really she's really loving. <laughs> okay, question two is does she have a theme song? Does she have a song you sing to her? Does she have a song that kind of reminds you of her, like maybe that was popular when you got her? I, I, you know, I, uh, I might say it might be a Beach Boy song. It might be Feel Flows, but it, which is a, is a, is a Carl Wilson song. <laughs> I think it's a very like, uh, I love I love the Beach Boys, so maybe I like the sound of like sort of sixties pop, that chamber pop kind of feeling. So okay. yes, feel flows. Okay, we'll give it to her. Since she is on tour with you, I this this starts as a a joke of a question, but I think it might be serious in your case. But do you have something for her in your tour rider? Oh no. Um, because my tour writer is just very bare, so I don't really have anything because we have to pay, pay for all that. So I don't, I don't need okay. anything. I just have like okay. water on there. But okay, um, hypothetically, what would she want on her tour writer? Um, she would probably want a lot of uh, chicken necks, a, a giant bag of chicken necks because that's her favorite food. And uh, she would like probably, which wouldn't be good for her. She would she would like some jerky treats, also chicken jerky treats, which are she shouldn't really have too many of because she does get diarrhea. And she would probably like her um, bed, but we don't really bring her bed on tour with us. But she she doesn't really like mind that. But she likes her heated bed. Nice. So. But maybe I have, I mean, I haven't thought of bringing a heated bed, but she, she does like that a lot. <laughs> okay. Number four is, do you have a dog voice? Do you use a dog voice to speak to her? Well, I mean, I think so because it's like, well, it's mostly that they talk. I talk in a high voice all day to all of my animals. So I'm talking to them all day. So I'm always speaking in that kind of like high voice. And do you <laughs> ever give her a voice? Do you speak for her, speak through her? As if what would oh. her voice? As if what would her voice be? I don't know. I haven't even thought of it. I thought maybe a little bit ras raspy, like a little bit of raspy kind of a Charlie Brown voice, maybe like a kind of okay. little bit of a raspy uh, right. baby. But voice. But not like something. she's smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Well, sometimes when she'll steal a French fry, um, she looks like she's smoking a cigar. Like she's <laughs> like got, you know got a racing form and she's betting on horses at the track <laughs> right i feel lucky <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome last but not least is there a dog organization or service you'd like to give a shout out to any of the charities you worked with or any of the i i love a uh, pug nation uh that's the the probably the one that i probably given the most to it's a very difficult breed and i love the breed but they have us a hard time breathing so yes. they need all the support they can get. And I love I love pugs. I think they're just the most beautiful creatures. And so um, I'd love to help rescue them. And um, also Best Friends, which is like, yeah. you know, classic, classic organization. And right now, also the Maui Humane Society are doing amazing, right. amazing yep. work rescuing so many animals that are in that fire zone. It's just really scary. Um so, you know, just seeing the work they're doing, it's it's really profound and really yes. incredible. Yes. Good. Good choices. Um, I just want to go back to the tattoo. You mentioned the tattoo of one of your dogs. Do you have any more tattoos of any of the other dogs you have? No. And and the one of my dog is actually of a horse because it's uh, my tattoo artist. His dog had died the same time as mine. And his dog was this magnificent, big, shepherdy black mix a huge dog and um he did a painting of his dog as a stallion like breaking through heaven 
And there was all these like people applauding and dancing and playing instruments to welcome the arrival of the magnificent beast. And so we were just crying over the story of like, you know, the dog is like realized his true being now he's a horse. And so it's right. Rafe as a horse and it has his name under it's Rafe and it's this beautiful black horse. Um, it's on my leg and, um, it's just a, a a way to sort of remember him and and know that he's not afraid of the wind anymore because he is the wind now and yes. and so to me it's just a it's a beautiful spiritual reminder but i haven't had any of my other dogs or cats tattooed but i'm sure that's going to, going to happen um cuz i have i have some space left so they deserve to be up there i agree i agree when that happens make sure you get a good shot and put it up on your socials so we can all enjoy i will well, Margaret, this was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for giving me your time. This is a, a, a really good time hearing about your dogs. And uh, she's beautiful. I mean, my, she's my really beautiful. My apologies to the cats. She's beautiful. The cats are beautiful, too, but they're shy. Yeah. You got like the the um, Dr. Evil cats, right? Those... Yes, they're, they're very, <laughs> um, they're very Dr. Evil. They're so beautiful. They're not, they're not evil in the least. They're more like Pink Panther. Okay. All oh, right, right, right funny well i'll let you go thank you again as i said this was a uh, this was quite quite fun for me so i hope you had a good time i did thank you very much and hi say hi to charlie i will thank you Do hi you charlie Char- Where is he? hi charlie <laughs> Right. Thank you, Margaret Cho, for coming on the show and sharing the wonderful aspects of her girl, Lucia. Margaret is on the home stretch of her live and livid tour. For dates and tickets, go to margaretcho.com. Margaret had three dog organizations to shout out. The first was Pug Nation, who are dedicated to the rescue, care, and placement of abandoned, neglected, unwanted, displaced, and abused pugs. To adopt, foster, donate, or volunteer, go to PugNationLA.org. Second was Best Friends Animal Society, who are the largest no-kill sanctuary in the country and are on a mission to make every shelter and every community no-kill by 2025. To learn more of their efforts to save them all, visit BestFriends.org. And third was the Maui Humane Society, who went to remarkable lengths to provide animal services for all those affected by the Lahaina fires. They are still in the midst of reuniting lost animals with their owners and seeking donations for dry cat and dog food to support displaced pets. To find out how you can help, go to MauiHumaneSociety.org. As for our petty needs, you can follow us on Instagram where you can see photos and videos of our guests and their dogs. Subscribe to the show wherever you listen so you'll always have our latest episode queued up like the one we've got coming next week with a hard rocking drummer and his two floofy pooches. All right, that concludes episode 65 with Margaret Cho on the Rocker Dog Podcast. We'll see you next time.